And we're live. It is great to be here. This is Global Tarot Circle for May 15th, 2019. We are still a minute away from our start time. And so we'll welcome people as they come on in. Uh, for those of you who are watching in archive, that could be archive here on Facebook or on YouTube, I welcome you as well. Please, uh, please do play along, but don't be offended when we can't answer your questions directly because we're not live. Liz Moore, good to see you. Mark Saylor, I see you're here. It's great to see you. Jan, I'm glad you're here. Hey, Chris Ann, I hope you can come to my classes in June in Connecticut. Glad you're here today. So it is now officially seven and people are coming into the room. Glad to see you all, and uh, thank you for checking in and saying hello. So, here's how we start, just like we do every month. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spend our first half hour together doing some readings. So, oh, Linda Rogers, glad you're here all the way from the UK. Sandra, happy to see you. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, eventually, the room will get so big and so busy, I'm not going to be able to acknowledge everyone, but please know how much I appreciate your being here. Okay, so what do we do? Hey, Irene, glad you're here. We start with readings for our first half hour. Those of you who are tarot readers, get your deck shuffled because we're going to need them. We'll be reading for each other. What I'd like everyone to do, I, I see people coming in and saying, hello, please do that. Let us know who you are. And uh, if you'd like, tell us where in the world you are. And most importantly, hey, Serena, glad you're here. Uh, most importantly, uh, Lanaya, glad you're here. We want your burning questions. The first half hour of our time together every month is dedicated to your questions. A burning question can be any sort of question you would like to ask a room full of tarot readers. That could be a question for a reading, a question about your life. We will be happy to read for you. Or perhaps you have a question about tarot itself. Hey, Tracy, glad you're here. Uh, Liz Moore, there you are in Delray Beach. We have not seen you in person in a long time. Mark Ryder, there in Connecticut, glad you're here. So. Burning questions. As I said, it could be a question about your life, something you would like a reading on. We are happy to read for you. It could also be a question about tarot. Perhaps you've had a card come up that you don't know how to interpret. Perhaps you have a question about how to read the cards. Let's see. Marion, you're here. Anna, you're here. Nilsa, glad you're here. Very good. Um... And Marion, Marion is Kirk Torres' son. I happen to know it's, it's Marion. Uh, it's okay that you don't have your deck. You're still allowed to ask questions. Um, okay. Let's see. And our first question is here from Sandra. Give me a card for my new love affair. Okay, let's dive right in. We've been here for two minutes and the questions are coming in, so we're doing great. Let's dive right in with a question for Sandra. Okay. So, those of you with decks with you who would like to play along, here's how we do it. We're all doing one card. Okay? So, the question is, what about Sandra's new love affair? If you'd like to play along, go ahead and Type in her name, Sandra, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation. It's that simple. And the thing is, folks, if we're reading for you, make sure you read the comments to get your reading. I'll do a card for you, but this is a worldwide reading. We've got people here from Australia, from the UK, from all over the United States, so you really are getting a global reading. So, what do we see for Sandra's new love affair? Ooh, the Ace of Swords reversed. I would like this so much better, Sandra, if it were upright. This tells me that there may be something that you have neglected to share with this person 
or something this person isn't yet comfortable telling you. It's not necessarily a bad thing for the relationship, but it does suggest that there needs to be more communication. So what else do we see for Sandra's new relationship? Okay, we've got Michelle um, here from Pennsylvania. I used to live in Pennsylvania. Okay, so uh, you're off to the Air Force next Wednesday, super nervous. Do we see it going smoothly? Uh, what do we think is going to happen? Do we see you staying with the Air Force or changing your branch? That's a lot of questions. Um, but first of all, thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. What can we see about Michelle going into the Air Force? If you would like to read for her, go ahead. Put her name, Michelle. She's a Michelle with two L's. The name of the card you got and your interpretation. What do we see about Michelle going into the Air Force? Nine of Swords reversed. This is a case where I really like the reversal. Okay, of course it's worrisome, but my friend, you have nothing to worry about. You have got this. It's going to be fine. Read the comments and let's see what other people have to say about Michelle going into the Air Force. Okay, and let's see. Next question. Okay, Liz. Uh, Liz is feeling the need to move back home to Massachusetts. She's here in Florida now. She's a Massachusetts girl. Should she consider it? If you would like to read for Liz, you know what to do. Put her name in, Liz, L-I-Z. The name of the card you got, and what do you think? Does it make sense for Liz to move back to Massachusetts? Oh, four of pentacles. So, you know... This speaks to me in many ways of a financial decision that you may want to choose the place that you feel would be best for you financially. What would be best for you financially? That may be the question. Now, the other thing about this card is I often see the Four of Pentacles as being about self-care, taking care of yourself. And the question is, where do you think you would do best taking care of yourself? Let's see what other people have to say. Hey, Linda, glad you're here. Lisa McCord, glad you're here. Hey, Mark Saylor. Mark Saylor wants to know about his job. Okay. Um, and again, if we're reading for you, make sure you scroll through the comments. The thing I always say is the majority of wisdom that happens here at Global Tarot Circle is happening in the comments. So make sure you read them and participate there. Okay. A card for Mark. If you'd like to read for Mark about his job, just put his name down. Mark, M-A-R-C, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation. Let's see what we got for Mark. Five of Cups. There has been real disappointment here. It has not gone the way you wanted it, and it's upsetting. And yet there are still some things of value here. At this moment, we have to acknowledge the difficulty, but also acknowledge the value. Acknowledge what is value about this, and don't take personally some of the stuff that's going on here. Okay, Kirk Torreson. Her name is actually Marion. Uh, but for uh, to, to try to uh, cut down on confusion, we're going to call her Kirk, K-I-R-K, because that's how she is here. That's her screen name. So if you would like to read for Kirk, it's her birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday. How will her birthday go? Four of Swords reversed. Again, this is a case where I like the reversal. You're going to be busy. And I think this is a precursor to the year ahead for you. It's going to be a very busy year. That's not a bad thing. If you'd like to read for her, put her name in. Kirk, K-I-R-K. The name of the card you got and your interpretation. How will her birthday go? Okay, on to my friend Nilsa. 
Nils is wondering what the universe wants her to know about her current relationship. If you would like to read for Nilsa, go ahead and put her name, Nilsa, N-I-L-S-A, the name of the cards you got, and your interpretation. And thank you guys so much, those of you who are doing readings. This is a great exercise in quick readings. Where did I learn to read so quickly? A lot of time on the radio. I've been the resident psychic of 14 different radio stations. It's a good practice. Okay, let's see. Nilsa, what does the universe want Nilsa to know about her relationship? Temperance, first major arcana card of the evening for Nilsa, at least for me. There may be other majors going on now for other people in the comments. So to me, Nilsa, this says that there are ways that this could be a good combination. It could be good. You need to be patient and you need to work on balance. You need to work on reciprocity. You know, this card reminds us that nothing in life is perfect. But if you use a little of this, a little of that, and you blend it together the right way, you can find the perfect blend. Is that saying that this is a perfect relationship? Not necessarily, but it is saying it is probably worthy of your patience. Okay, my friend Jan in Tampa. I'll be in Tampa in July. Would love to see my Tampa friends while I'm there. Uh, Jan has met a new guy, hallelujah. Better than who has been in her life. So Jan, Jan is a lovely, lovely woman. She's had some bad luck in love. Has her luck turned around? What do you see? Go ahead, pull a card for Jan. Put her name, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation. What do we think about the new guy? Is he better? Ooh. Ooh. Jan, the devil. Um, we could have some problems here. The devil can speak to substance abuse issues, alcoholism, mental health issues. Now, that is not necessarily a deal breaker on a relationship, but you want to take a look at what's going on here. I know this could describe your entire past, so if other people are getting positive cards, we could always look at this as speaking to the past, um, but it does concern me a little bit. So let's see what other people have to say. Okay. And uh, hey, Joanne Patterson. Um, how about new job? Is the new job going to be cool or not? Joanne has had some job issues. What do we see for Joanne? If you'd like to read for her, put her name in. Joanne, that's with two N's and an E. The name of the card you got, and we have a couple of Joannes here. This is Joanne Patterson, not Joanne Matthew. Um, Joanne, the name of the card, and what do you see? How is this new job for Joanne? Our page of Pentacles, I actually think it's going to be good. Nothing keeps you down for long, Joanne. You just bounce and keep on going. I think in this job there is a lot to learn, and I think it could be good. Okay, and Michael Wells is here having birthday dinner with Courtney. Michael, happy birthday. Find me a place in the St. Petersburg area to do a meetup, won't you? Just give my love to Courtney. Okay, let's see. We've got people here from Portugal, from San Francisco, all over the place. Let's, uh, let's keep going. We've got readings going on. Cameron. A card for buying a new car, please and thank you. I hope at least one of us gets the chariot. Okay, if you'd like to read for Cameron, giving her information about her new car, about buying a new car. Her name, Cameron, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation, what do we see? Oh, Ace of Cups. Very good. I think you're going to find a car that you really love, that you really connect with. I bet you're one of those people who names your cars. I'm that person, too. Um, so I think this is going to go very well. I feel good about it. Hey, Robin Renee, good to see you here. Uh, let's see. 
Here we go. Next question from Sharon. Having financial issues now, why? Sharon is wondering the spiritual nature. What is blocking her finances? Why aren't things going well for her right now? If you would like to read for Sharon, go ahead and put her name in, Sharon, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation. And I see some people here who have not been here before doing readings, and I am so grateful to you and so happy that you are doing that. This is such a good opportunity for us to practice together and for us to share with each other. Okay, what do we see about Sharon's finances? Page of Swords Reverse. Sharon, your problem is you don't believe in yourself in some way. There is something that you're either not asking for, you're not asking for what you need, you're not believing in yourself. It may be that on a practical level, there is something new that you need to learn to help you here. So let's all do some magic together and turn this right side up and welcome some new prosperity for Sharon but consider ways that you need to improve communication, ways that you need to improve the way you think about yourself. And is there something new you need to learn, either about money, about money management or money magic, or is it a matter of needing to learn a new job skill? Okay, let's see what we got going on here. And I see a lot of new people coming in that I, uh, that I haven't seen in a while or haven't seen before and haven't said hello to. I apologize for that. Please take the blanket hello. Uh, we've got a big room here right now and I'm really grateful for that. Okay, question from Robin Renee. What's the deal with Johnny? Huh, well, that's a loaded question. Okay, I'll bite. What's the deal with Johnny? If you'd like to read for Robin, go ahead and put her name in. Robin, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation. What's the deal with Johnny? Ah, the world reversed. Johnny may not know what the deal is with Johnny yet. I think Johnny is figuring out Johnny. Johnny is figuring out Johnny's place in the world. If this is about a relationship between the two of you, I think you haven't quite come into each other's worlds yet. So this is something that might require some patience and some communication. Okay, let's see who's next. Lots of readings going on here, and I really do appreciate this. Okay, now we've got Joanne Matthew. And Joanne Matthew has been with Tarot Circle for years. Uh, she's um, been an in-person member of Tarot Circle. And we're happy to have her here today. She says, my friend Ronnie is here with me and would like to know how long it will take to sell her house, please. So we have two Joannes, and they're both spelled the same way. This is Joanne Matthew, so it's probably a good idea to denote that. Okay, Joanne M. or Joanne Matthew. And uh, the question is, how long will it take Ronnie to sell her house? Go ahead and give the name of the card that you got and your interpretation. What do we see for Joanne? Joanne's friend, Ronnie, selling her house. Eight of Pentacles, that tells me she'll probably sell it in August. Okay, let's see what other people have to say. And I'm so happy to see so many people who are with us very faithfully every month, as well as a lot of new people here very good, very good. A um, lot of uh, lot of great readings going on. Okay, this is an interesting one from Cynthia. She wants to know if her son's okay. Well, there's lots of degrees to okay, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, if you'd like to read for Cynthia, just put her name, Cynthia. The name of the cards you got and your interpretation, what can we see for Cynthia's son? The tower reversed. Thank goodness it's reversed. This is a case we're really looking, uh, we're really happy to see the reversal. Honestly, I would say he's not okay now, but he will be. Either the worst is over or it's not going to be as bad as we thought. Okay. 
Let's see. Lots of readings going on. Really appreciate that. And uh, okay, question for Lisa McCord. Hey, Lisa, I've got your yoga mat right over here. You have to come back and get it. Maybe come to class next Wednesday. Yay. Uh, my question is about work. We are undergoing major changes with new leadership. How is this going to play out for me? If you would like to take a look at Lisa's work for her, go ahead and put her name, Lisa, the name of the cards you got, and your interpretation. Okay, let's see what we got here. Ooh, Ace of Pentacles reversed. This is not what I would like to see. I am afraid that these changes may not be in your favor. Uh, let's all do some magic together and let's turn this card right side up to welcome some great job energy for Lisa. Let's see what the other cards say, but I am a little concerned about this. It makes me think it would not be a bad idea to get your resume together. Let's see what other people say. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, I'd like to keep it to one question per person, please. So if you've had a question answered, wait till next month and look how organized I am, people. Better than usual, I have, there it is, right here, the next meeting. We always meet at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Our next meeting is June 5th. I know that's not a full month. We meet once a month. We meet at my convenience. Sorry, that's the way it is. I hope it's convenient for everyone else. So mark your calendars. If you have other questions, come on back. Okay, Deirdre, glad you're here. Uh, will things get better at work? Okay, if you'd like to read about Deirdre's job, will things get better for her? Go ahead and put her name, Deirdre, the name of the cards you got, and your interpretation. And again, if we're reading for you, make sure you read down the list to see what everyone has to say and make sure you thank all the people who are reading for you. Okay, let's see. For Deirdre, will things get better at work? Four of Swords, they will certainly get busier. I don't know if that's better. It's Four of Swords reverse. It's the second time we've seen this, and you saw me shuffle. It's going to be busy. I, I can't say if that's better or worse, but there it is. Let's see what the other people have to say about that. Okay. Kathy, Kathy Lipinski, how are you? Have a second offer on the house. Will this one go through to contract? If you'd like to read for Kathy, she is a K-A-T-H-I-E. Will her house sell this time? Will this offer go through? Go ahead and put her name, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation. Knight of Wands, I would say that it probably will. You'll have to report back and let us know, but I feel good about it. Let's see what other people have to say. Okay. Let's see. And, and Cameron says she does get very attached to her cars. That, that makes sense. Okay. Here we go. Okay, Sabrina Luna, glad you're here. Here's the question. Health outlook on the younger brother. His name is Bart. If, and, you know, I love it. You know, this is the second person here who has asked a question about another person to help another person. That's such a loving thing to do. Joanne Matthew did it. Now Sabrina Luna's doing it. Thank you so much. If you would like to check in on Sabrina's younger brother, put her name, Sabrina, the name of the card, and your reading. And this is a teachable moment because it is a health question. There are a lot of people who are uncomfortable talking about health. Why? Well, first of all, because we're not doctors. Secondly, because people can be uncomfortable with the concept that you might have to give bad news. You know, whenever you're dealing with a touchy subject, you have to think about, well, what if I'm wrong and what if I'm right? If the information you're giving cannot be phrased in a way that is helpful, then it is better to say nothing. Okay, 
Let's do this. What do we see for Bart? Okay, I got the Two of Pentacles. That says to me that there are some things that need to be taken care of. It may take some time. It may not be perfect, but I think he's going to be okay. Um, and very often when I see the Two of Pentacles, I think about health issues with things we have two of. Breasts, testicles, knees, hands, you know, legs, whatever. Um, so I don't know what the particular problem is. Eyes, it could be. Uh, but whatever it is, I think it's going to be okay. I don't think it's going to get worse, but it's going to take some work. That's what I think. Let's see what other people have to say. Okay. Um, I missed Linda, and, and Linda's been here before. She knows what to do. Obviously, I'm scrolling through really quickly, trying to pick out the questions. If I missed your question, go ahead and ask it again. No double dipping, but if you haven't had a question answered here yet today, and I scrolled past you accidentally, definitely put it back in as Linda has done. Okay. How will her finances be in the next three months, please? Okay. If you would like to read for Linda, and we may have had another Linda here so far today. I don't actually remember. I know we had a Lisa, uh, but this is Linda Rogers about her finances over the next three months. Let's see what we see. Hi, Priestess. I think things are coming into balance and are going to be good, maybe better than expected. I think you will be making some wise decisions in this regard. Let's see what other people have to say. Okay. Oh, we've got someone here from Ecuador. Annie from Ecuador. Glad you're here. Okay. Shelly Patel. Glad you're here. Um, still struggling to sell their home. What can we do to improve our odds? What can Shelly do to help sell her home more quickly? If you would like to check in with Shelly, uh, just put her name. That's S-H-E-L-L-E-Y. The name of the card you got and your interpretation. What can she do to sell her home more quickly? The Five of Swords Reverse. This says you may need to come down on your price a little bit. Let's see what other people have to say. Okay. Hey, Joanne Courier, good to see you. You know I'm going to be in Connecticut in June. Just saying. Okay. Let's see. Lots of readings going on. <laughs> Beth Ann Davis, good to see you. What a funny question. What's my deal? My deal is I want to see you here in person in my conference room in class next week. But Beyond that, uh, Beth Ann Davis, what's her deal? Okay. Uh, if you'd like to read for Beth Ann, that's her name, Beth Ann. Go ahead and put in the car, her name, the card you got, and your interpretation. It's a great question. What's Beth Ann's deal? Seven of Swords reversed. You are still trying to figure out who you are. You are still trying to figure out what is true about you, not what other people think is true about you, not what other people want to be true about you, but what is really true about you. Figure that out and you'll do well. Hey, Terry from Palm City. Glad you're here. Okay. I'm right here in Palm City. All right. Let's see. Lots of readings going on. Okay, Lanaya, I hope I am pronouncing your name right. Please forgive me if I'm not. Um, if you'd like to read for her, it's spelled L-Y-N-N-I-A-H. She's in need of a new direction. She's 65. Um, most of the family is gone. She's barely getting by on Social Security. What can we say for Lanaya? If you'd like to read for her, there's her name the name of the card, and your interpretation. Okay. Whatever card you got, make sure you give the interpretation. Okay. Knight of Pentacles. Lanaya, I think you're going to work. I think you are going to find a way to supplement your income, and it's going to help you not just financially, but emotionally. It's a whole new chapter for you, and I think it's going to be a good thing. Okay. Sometimes the universe gives us difficulties to cause us to do something we wouldn't normally do. We wouldn't think to do, but that really does help us. And I think that may be the case here. Okay. We are coming to the end of our first half hour. That means we're going to be winding down on the readings. 
go ahead and finish the readings that you're doing. Um, I'm just going to scroll through here and uh, see if, uh, if anything. Okay, this will be our last reading, and it's nepotism for sure, because I used to tuck her in at night. Okay, this is Amanda Levesque. My good friend, she's now a tarot reader, but I have known her since she was eight years old. She was friends with my daughter and, and really became a member of our family, used to go camping with us in the summer. And the fact that she's here, we got to do a card for Amanda. All she wants is, what does the universe want Amanda to know? So if you would like to read for Amanda, because she was such a cute kid and, and she's a good, good grown-up too, what does the universe want Amanda to know? Just a card for her. Let's see what we've got. Nine of swords reversed. Amanda, they may, there may be some things that are really getting you down, that are making you feel depressed, that are making you feel like things aren't going your way. We're happy for the reversal here. This says to me that it's okay. There's some things you're worried about that you probably don't need to be worried about. I feel like some of the darkness that you're dealing with is going to lift, and it's your job to work on lifting it. For those of you we didn't get to, for those of you who had more than one question, our next meeting is June 5th. We do this once a month. It's Global Tarot Circle. We're glad you're here. Now, how do we figure out what our topics of study and discussion are going to be? Well, we have a Global Tarot Circle Facebook group. And every month, a day or two before, or even the day of, I hop on there and I say, hey guys, what do you want to discuss? From that list, I pick a few things and that becomes our discussion. So we have three things that we're going to discuss today uh, by request. Two of them re were requested in the group. One of them was actually private message to me from the group. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing is a discussion on court cards. Oh my gosh, I just have to say this. Julie got the very same card for Amanda that I did at the very same second. That is really cool. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's start with court cards. Many, many people find that court cards are very difficult to interpret. And that's because court cards are probably the most versatile of all the cards. They can be people. They can be aspects of yourself. They can be advice. They can be predictive. So how do we know what a court card means in a particular reading? Those of you who have finished up your readings, ring in on this. What do you think about court cards? Do you not like court cards? Do you like them? Do you have a system to work with court cards? Obviously, this is a whole class, and guess what? I'm actually teaching a class on court cards at Dream Angels in Tequesta, Florida at the end of the month. So, if you happen to be local, consider coming to my court card class, but I'm going to give you my thumbnail on how I do court cards, and I'd love other people to ring in on this and to share some of your own methods and ideas about court cards. So, for those of you who are new to tarot, the court cards are the 16 people cards. The minor arcana of tarot is very much like a playing deck. It has four suits, cards ace through ten, and then a court of four characters, generally page, knight, kings, queens, and kings. Now, my way of interpreting court cards is element plus rank equals the card. What do I mean by that? Well, the four suits are each associated with one of the four elements. Most typically, swords are air, wands are fire, pentacles are earth, cups are water. And we know that the four elements have metaphysical properties as well as physical ones. 
if you've studied astrology at all, you know that the 12 astrological signs have elemental associations. And so that's kind of how you want to think about it. Now, then there's rank. The ranks, of course, page, knight, queen, king. So when we think of page, the key words for page are youth, student, and communication. So if it's a person, it's going to be a young person or a person who's a student, a person learning something new, or it's going to be a communicator, a person who communicates very well or who has something to say. If it's describing you, it may be telling you that you need to learn something or that you need to speak of something. It may predict receiving communication or going to school. Okay, so that's how that rank works. What would be the nature of the person or the message or the schooling? Well, there you're going to look at the element. If it's cups or water, it's going to be, if it's a message, it's going to be a love letter. If it's a personality, it's someone who's very sensitive. If it's, um, if it's what you're going to learn or what you have to study, it's going to be something very close to your heart, something that you love, right? If it's pentacles, it's going to be about money. It's going to be about business. It's going to be about practicality. If it's wands, it's going to be about something exciting, something motivating, something spiritual, something humorous, something fun, something creative. If it's swords, it's going to be about something intellectual, something that reveals the truth. Uh, swords are also about communication. So like the page of swords is, is a communicator's communicator. Does that all make sense? Okay, I see Angelique Camille is here. Glad you're here my good friend from Atlanta. Okay. So the rank of knight, also youth, but travel and pursuit. So knights as people are in pursuit of something or the prediction of a knight card might be that you're going on a trip, may talk about travel, or the advice may be that you yourself need to pursue something. Again, what should you pursue? Well, there you look at the element of the suit. Queens, typically adult women, but also about nurturance. Kings, typically adult men, but also about leadership or institutions. Uh, kings will come up a lot for people who work in hospitals or banks or things of that nature institutions. Now, my system of doing this, um, as far as people is concerned, I use reversals. And so generally speaking, I feel like court cards, when they're people and upright, they are upright people. They are bringing the best aspect of their element. When they're reversed, they're not. So your cups people, when reversed, may be depressed or shy. Your swords people, when they're reversed, may be stupid or dishonest. Sorry, but there it is. Or poor communicators. Your pentacles people may be having job issues or they may be uh, irresponsible or broke when they're reversed. Your wands people may be boring or bored or unmotivated or not feeling well when they're reversed. Um, Kirk Torreson says, with the courts, I start by the element and then I usually get a gut feeling if it's a person, place, or something else. And that brings us to a great question. How do you decide what it is? If it's a, a person, if it's, if it's something, you know, how, how do you know if it's a person or not? I think intuition is a lot of it. I think context is a lot of it. What is the context of the question? Okay. Let's see. Um, doo -doo 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 okay, and I, I am sorry. I know we missed quite a few questions here. Uh, that's going to encourage you to get here early next time on June fifth when we do this again. And um, I do appreciate everyone doing readings. And uh, I'm just looking for some other comments on the courts before we move on. Um, 
Okay. Anna, here's a question. What is the main difference between the kings and the emperor as far as energy? So that's an interesting thing. Um, the energy of the emperor for me is very stable, very responsible. Uh, when he's reversed, it may be the opposite or he may be one who is being too controlling. Um, do we see the kings the same way? Actually, I kind of do. I feel like the kings very much are like the emperor, just as the queens are very much like the empress. What do other people think about that? Love to hear about it. Okay, so now let us move on to our next topic. And Sarah Miguel has asked about the fork in the road, using tarot for decision making. That will be our final exercise here today. Um, Tracy says, I look at the emperor as more of a control freak, no give, just take, take, take. You know, I know a lot of people who really don't like the emperor. I, I see that a lot. Um, I, I, you know, my thing is, is I try really hard not to feel negatively about any particular card, except in context. But we all have our own relationships with the cards. And the thing is, if you have a really negative relationship with a particular card, it's interesting to look at that in your life. Like if you really don't like the emperor, how's your relationship with your father? Or have you had a difficult relationship with a man in your life? You know, something like that. Okay. Now, Joanne Matthew wanted us to have a conversation about our favorite tarot decks. You know, right now, this minute on the planet, um, as my friend Jenna Matlin says, tarot is having a moment. There are a lot of decks being published. There's a lot of new people coming to tarot. I think this is just a wonderful thing. Um, but, you know, if you can look, you see I've got two shelves of tarot and another one over here. I have a lot of decks. I've been doing this for a long time. I've collected a lot of decks. The newest deck to my collection came to me from Serena Fox. I'm just finishing up my review of this that I'll be pub publishing next week. It is the Moonchild Tarot, which I love very much. Um, and we've got some other conversations going on about the emperor. So make sure you read those and, uh, and see what people have to say about the emperor. I thank people for ringing in. So where do you stand with tarot decks? I have a bunch. But in terms of my professional use, I use very few. And, you know, I always have one deck that is what I call my workhorse deck. That is my current professional deck. Right now it's the Hanson Roberts. I have a list of decks that I tend to go back and forth with. I wear out a deck in about three months. So a deck like this, the Moonchild Tarot, that is so beautiful. I do want to use it for some professional readings, but I really don't want to wear it out. I want to keep it for special. You know, like you have certain dresses that you don't want to wear all the time because you want to keep them for special. This is one of those for me. Um, my workhorse decks tend to all be weight related. I am a weight girl. I really am. I will use pretty much any version of the weight deck. Um, <laughs> uh, Ser did Serena just say, I have a tarot deck illness? <laughs> You're going to have to explain that one. Um, so my favorite tarot decks to use for professional readings. I, uh, oh, Susan says she has about a hundred decks is loving the Philly tarot right now. That's great. Do you live in Philly, Susan? I wonder about people who are not in Philly using the Philly deck. Do they? I don't know. Tell us. So my favorite decks uh, for professional reading, I love the Spiral Tarot. I love the Hanson Roberts. Um, I love Morgan Greer. I love every weight deck, as I said. Okay. Uh, Catherine, she likes the Rider Waite Smith. Absolutely. Okay. And Serena says her illness is she has too many decks. Um, and, ah, uh, Tracy, I called you out. The emperor is very much her ex-husband. There you go. Oh, Cameron just got the dark mansion tarot, and she loves it. That deck looks really cool. Joanne says, I collect for the art, 
and I use a few, mostly uh, Rider weight based for reading. Current favorite is the Crow deck. Least favorite, I'm um, sorry she bought it, is the Olympic deck. Yeah, what about decks you don't like? Um, you know, I have, oh, yep, Susan lives in the Philly suburbs. There you are. Um, you know, I've actually never met a tarot deck I didn't like. But there are certainly some decks I'm less comfortable reading with. And look, Kristen is using the crow as well and is using it right now. Uh, Linda Rogers, she is the um, the Charmin Caselli, Hanson Roberts, Robin Wood. Oh, Robin Wood, what a great deck. Morgan Greer. Yeah, I, I like all of those very much. Uh, Catherine also has the tarot deck illness. She is a greedy tarot pig. Oh, <laughs> uh, Cameron loves the steampunk, um, with art by Ali Fell, a longtime favorite. So do you ever use more than one deck in a reading? And Serena reminds me that I love the Orbifold. I really do. It's such an unusual deck. Um, I, I do. I, I think it's a, a great, a great way to play with tarot. Um, Terry has the Gilded Tarot. Yeah, what a great deck. And of course, Chiro Marchetti is a fabulous tarot artist. He's right here in Florida with us. And you know what? I use the Gilded professionally. Also, his Legacy of the Divine. Oh, I love that deck. I love it. Um, and Catherine is using her Morgan Greer. I love that one. And I love the new one that comes in the tin, the little one. That's beautiful. Uh, Kirk Torres' son, Marion, just bought the Mystic Dreamer and says the cardstock is awful. Oh my gosh, that is heartbreaking when that happens. Okay, Puck Smith. Hey, glad to see you here, Puck. Um, I like the energy of the Thoth types for heavy, dark questions. Liberty is my current favorite. Yes, absolutely. Serena says, yes, I do use multiple decks. Susan loves the Victorian Romantic. Lisa likes to layer decks, absolutely. Cameron also uses more than one deck and likes to combine tarot and oracle. You know, I think it would be so much fun to do a study of the different ways we use more than one deck together because there really are no rules on that. I think we're all very intuitive about it and just kind of play with it. That would make a great book, wouldn't it? That would be fun. Uh, Cameron also liked the decks and the tins. Um, yeah, I do too. Um, Catherine doesn't like the borders of the Mystic Dreamer. Anna Luisa says, um, I love to let different decks talk about the same topic. Let them mingle and make the message more interesting. Sure. Tracy says, I use whatever deck talk calls to me when I say the client's question and name. I use them all and I have 60 plus decks. Same for my own personal readings. I can never stick to one deck. We are the exact opposite in that way. That is so cool. Um, Susan, the proletariat tarot. I have never even heard of that one. Um, Catherine likes to layer the decks and sometimes incorporates oracle cards as well. So this is really enlightening to me. I didn't realize there were so many people using more than one deck. Interesting stuff. Um, uh, Kirk says it's the faces that creep me out. So you know which deck does creep me out? I love it, but it creeps me out. Um, and now I can't think of the name of it, but I have oh, Deviant Moon. I have issues with Deviant Moon for no particular reason, except it creeps me out a little bit. Okay, but you know what? Here are Here's a deck I really have an issue with, and it's got some of the most beautiful artwork in the world, but I have an issue with it because it is so far away from traditional tarot, and that's the Chrysalis Tarot. Best artwork. Absolutely love it but I cannot see the Hierophant as a divine child. Just doesn't work for me. Okay. Um, Catherine uses a spreadsheet to catalog her decks. So this is a funny thing. I actually had to inventory my decks for tax purposes recently. That was kind of fun. I did it in Excel. Yes, absolutely. And Cameron loves the Deviant Moon. There we go. Um, 
Okay, so now, what a fun conversation. We will definitely continue this. But here is our final exercise, and this was given to us by Sarah. Um, it's about a fork in the road. When you come to a fork in the road where you have a decision to make, two roads diverged in a yellow path, and sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. There I stood. Yes, see, I can quote Robert Frost. Huh. I've got many, many talents. Okay, so... What do you do when you're at a fork in the road? My thing is I will do a three card reading. One is for option one, two is for option two, and three is for something I hadn't thought of yet. What are your decision-making spreads? How do you use tarot to make decisions? Sometimes I will also sort of like think about it, you know, okay, well, what if I do this? Okay, option A. What if I do option A? What is the outcome of option A? And you pull a couple of cards. I might pull two, three, four cards, the outcome of option A. And then I will look at option B. What is the outcome of option B? And pull a few cards. Sometimes, you know, if it's the sort of thing that's going to impact the future, in my mind, I will think about, okay, let's move forward on the timeline. A year from now, what does this look like? If I do this, where am I in a year? If I do that, where am I in a year? So what do you do for decision-making? How do you do that? I would like us... First of all, to share some of your ideas about how to do a decision-making spread. And I'm curious how many of you are in some kind of decision-making process right now. I think it would be fun for us to each do a three-card decision-making spread. Uh, Kirk Torreson, Marion, I do two three-card readings and see what looks like the best option. Exactly. And when we're weighing cards one against another, sometimes it's obvious. You know, if the sun comes up for option A and the ten of swords comes up for option B, I know which one I'm choosing. But sometimes you really have to weigh it out. Um, Anna Luisa, I find it important at times to ask myself, what do I expect from the two options? Uh, what I really want then I would use two groups, as you suggested, and see which one reflects my needs better. Susan does two crosses, five cards, side by side, with a key card in between the two to tip the scales. That's really cool. Uh, Linda says, yes, I use option A, option B. Use three cards and one more for advice, same as I do. Um, oh, you guys are so good. You're scrolling so fast. I got to go back here. Um, I put the timing in the question if timing is involved. Cameron says, I pull option one, option two, and what is the most, oh, this is good. What is the most important aspect of the choice I should focus on? Then pull extra cards for additional insight. Yes. When making this decision, what should be the most important factor? What is the most important factor in making the decision? That's huge. From Kristen, hey, I hope to see you when I'm in Connecticut in June, my friend. Um, I almost always start with a Celtic cross just to get clear on the context. I don't really read it. I just note what it vibes. Then I'll clean it up and either just shuffle and talk or pull cards as I go. Or I'll do three cards if I need more something more structured. If the Celtic cross was super clear, sometimes I just pull... Sometimes I just pull clarifiers. I don't throw a billion cards because I find the magic is much more if the question is, um, the, is much more in the question wording than in the spread. Okay, so this all came from Sarah. Sarah says, I'm in an extreme decision process at the moment, but no clue which one to take, and both are hugely life-changing. Okay, how many other people have decisions to make right now? If you do, go ahead and try maybe a, a three card, one card for option A, one card for option B, 
um, one card for some other thing, or maybe even one card to say what should be the biggest factor in your decision making. Share with us what you got. Let's go ahead and play with this. Catherine says, I sometimes do a three card spread. The three cards are start, stop, continue. What should I start? What should I stop doing? And what should I continue? Oh, I like that. Here's from Tracy. See, this is why it's so good when we gather together. We can really learn from each other. I hope everyone's taking notes. I know I am. Uh, here's my go-to spread from Tracy. I use two different decks and ask the same question, question of each deck. What's underlying about the decision? What will you gain from the decisions? What challenges come with the decision? What opportunities come with this decision? Hidden factor about the decision? Advice outcome. That is very, very cool. Now, those of you who are professional readers or who do casual readings for other people, do you ever feel concerned um, that you might lead someone in the wrong way? You know, like I'm always very careful and people come to me for decision making all the time, but I'm always very careful to say, you know, I can't make your decision for you. Uh, generally, my wording when I look at the cards is, well, if I were you, I would probably do this. Uh, but sometimes, too, it shows up as six of one, half a dozen another. You know, that whatever you do, you're going to end up in the same place. I don't know if you've ever had that happen. So I really like uh, start, stop, continue. Since I don't have a big decision right now, I'm going to do that. And I'd, I love it when we end with people doing a reading. So if you have a decision make to make, try one of these and let's play right now. Um, and Kirk Torreson says, it's maybe worth saying that you're at, with Uranus moving into Taurus for the next six to seven years, it will be time of huge changes globally. The last time Uranus was in Taurus was in the late 1930s, 1940s, and we know what happened then. Um, that's, um, that's concerning. You know, I was concerned before about the Uranus, um, the Uranus Pluto square. The last time that happened was in the same time period. We can sort of see evidence of all of this on the planet. Um, and Susan says, yes, I play for, pray first and foremost to do no harm and find that empowering. Um, so, uh, so Julie is, is doing, um, let's see, option A, do it. Um, uh, she gets the world. Oh, it's to, to have to meet with someone. She gets the world. Option B, don't meet the six of swords reversed. What do I need to focus on? Seven of swords reversed. You need to trust a little Julie. And I think you should meet the person. That's what I say. Okay. So let's see. Um, what should I start? The devil. That's an interesting thing to start. That's a good question in context. And honestly, I really think it's about starting a diet, to be honest with you. What should I stop? Eight of cups reversed. Um, there are some things I probably need to let go of. What should I continue? Queen of Swords, I should continue telling the truth. Very good. Uh, what I always say as we come to the end here is if you're doing these spreads and you want to play further, come on over to the Global Tarot Circle group on Facebook and share your thoughts about decision making, share your questions, share your spreads. We're not a terribly active group, but we could be if you wanted to be. So go ahead. You know, you can share any kind of spreads there. We're coming to our very end. Uh, Sarah says diets are the devil. Yeah, no doubt. Or the need for the diet is the devil. Okay. So uh, this is time for shameless self-promotion. I'm going to do mine verbally. But I'd like you all, if you've got something you want to promote, a website, a Facebook page, a podcast, a book, whatever you got going on, drop a link. Let's support each other. I am here today, tra-la, tra-la, to promote my new book, the second edition of Tarot Tour Guide. It's here. Hallelujah. You can get a signed copy on my website, christianagaudette.com, or from me in person, 
or it's available on Amazon. The Kindle version is not up yet, but it will be very soon. Um, as you can see, Stephen Bright has done my cover again, and I am so grateful for that. This is the first book published by my new company, Card and Craft Incorporated. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. For those of you who are local, I am teaching a class on reading for yourself here in my classroom in Palm City next Wednesday, 7 o'clock. It's 3750, small class size. Would love to see you there. And as I mentioned, I'm also teaching a court card class at Dream Angels the last Thursday of the month. I am available here in Palm City for readings. I also do readings, mentorship from anywhere in the world, phone, Skype, FaceTime, Messenger, we can meet together. And I will be in Connecticut doing readings in Madison and also doing house calls and house parties and teaching a couple of classes. That's in June. I'm going to be there from the 12th to the 25th. So I would love to see you there just reach out. You can reach out to me here on Facebook. Go to my website, Christiana Gaudette, for more information. I really appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much. We meet back here June 5th. If you have a question, didn't get a question answered, want to share a spread, want to share some cards, ask to join Global Tarot Circle on Facebook. We would love to see you there. Thank you so much. I love meeting with you once a month. I will look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a great evening.